Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share a scrapbooking process video with you. Now today's layout is a little bit different and it's a little bit exciting. So the layout I'm sharing with you today was created for the Great Southern Scrappers YouTube Hop. Now this hop has been organised by the gorgeous Essie Ruth and she has gotten together a group of scrappers from Australia and New Zealand, so hence the Great Southern in the title. And we've all gotten together and Essie has kindly designed a beautiful mood board that we are all working with. So what I will actually do is I will pop it up in the corner here so you can have another look at it. I did have it in the opening titles there so that you could see it. But I'll pop it up in the corner there, have a look at it. And this is what we were all working with to inspire us. We could take anything that we wanted from this beautiful mood board. And there is, you can see, a colour palette down the side there. So I was allowing myself to be guided by the colours in the palette and as soon as I saw the colour palette, the first thing I thought of was the Coco Vanilla Studio Daydream Collection, which I absolutely adore. So I pulled out my Daydream Collection and I also pulled out a couple of little photos of myself and my boys that was taken at school um, back when they were in year one. They had an, an early years expo at the school, which was basically just an open day where people could come into the school if they were thinking about enrolling their child in prep and they could just meet some of the teachers and have a look around the facilities. And on that day, other parents were invited to come in and do some activities with their kids. So I went in there and I did some craft activities and yeah, we had lots of fun. So we snapped a couple of quick selfies before I went home. So getting into my layout here, what I have actually done is I have created a background using Distress Oxides there. So I'm actually working with three colours for this background. The green colour that you can see across the background there is called Bundled Sage. And I'm also working with Mustard Seed and Abandoned Coral. Now, the cardstock that I am using is a 300 GSM cardstock. No, I did not put any gesso on this cardstock. It is just smooth, white, 300 GSM weight. Now, what I did with the Distress Oxide ink pad was I just swiped that clean across the page, just made some lines on the page. Then I used my number four, my wide number four brush, just with a little bit of water. And then I just brushed over it just to activate the oxide and just to create some paint stripes there. That's it simplest technique ever so just swipe it across use your brush and activate it if you want to put gesso on your background that's fine put gesso on your background as i said because i was working with the 300 gsm cardstock which is a good heavyweight cardstock and it's beautiful and smooth and it's beautiful and white um, i didn't prep the background whatsoever i just put the oxide straight onto it so once i'd actually dried off the bundled sage I then put some of the mustard seed onto my messy mat, mixed it with a little bit of water, added some splatters, and then I repeated the process with the abandoned coral distress oxide as well. So I've got the green in the background and then I've got sort of a pink and yellow splatters over the top. Now I'm working with the Coco Vanilla Studio Daydream Collection, as I said. So I actually pulled out the 6x8 paper stack for this because I had a number of papers left and I just was looking for a sheet that I could use just to place an anchor piece on my background where I was then going to build my layout from. So I cho chose that sort of light coral pinky colour there with the scallop print on it and I was just going to use my T-square just to anchor it down and that gives me the starting point for all my paper layers. I can then build up, I can build out and I can build up from the page as well. So I stuck that down. Now in addition to the 6x8 paper stack I actually went through my stash of the Daydream collection and I thought I might try and bust a few of the little leftover bits, bits and pieces that I had in some of the packets, some of the stickers I had a few little paper scraps that I thought I would try and use up and I actually noticed that I had quite a number of these um, wood grain frames which I wanted to make use of on the page which also tied in well with that with the color scheme as well. So I I did fiddle 
way too much with these frames, I have to admit. Um, I was a little indecisive on this layer, a little more indecisive than I usually am, and I fiddled far too much. I just couldn't quite get the right placement of frames and photos. You'll see I got there in the end, but it was a bit of a tedious process, which is why it's all sort of sped up. You don't want to sit there and watch me think and basically hear the cogs turning in my brain. Um, so yeah, I got, I figured out sort of how I was going to place those frames and where I was going to place the photos. And then you'll see that I just get those out of the way because I am actually going to add a few more bits and pieces, papery bits and pieces to the page. Now out of my stash, I pulled a couple of yellow doilies. I had sort of a six inch one and then I had that smaller, uh, I think it's a four, I think it's a four inch. Um, they were slightly different yellow tones. In the end, I went for the smaller size because it had more of a rich, buttery tone that tied in really well with the mustard seed oxide. So I just popped that there. You can see that uh, rainbow stripe papers there from the Stepping Stones paper. Uh, I had a couple of tiny little scraps there. So I just thought, well, I'll use those up. So I just tucked one down the side, one at the top. And you can see as I'm going, I'm bending up all the corners as well, just to give the page extra dimension. Now, in addition to that, I also had another scrap of paper that I had previously fussy cut some rainbows from. Uh, I didn't want to waste that. So I fussy cut the one and uh, it's probably three quarters of a rainbow. You can see the edge of it was actually cut off there. I also had a couple of labels left from the cut apart sheet. So I thought, why not just cut those and stick those in the layers as well? Because it all just adds to the effect. So at this stage, you can see the bones of my page there. I've just got, you know, all my little bits and pieces. I'm just sticking them on. I was kind of dictated where that second rainbow was going to go simply because the edge of it was cut off. So I knew I had to tuck it in underneath something um, along that right hand edge. And here we go, painful, back to these frames again, which I did fiddle with, again, way too much. But as I said, I got there in the end. So you can see the colour scheme that I'm working with. It just, this collection just ties in beautifully with Essie's mood board that we were all working with. And I had these photos. I didn't actually print these photos specifically for this layout. I have a couple of photo boxes where I've previously printed things. And in hindsight, I probably should have reprinted these ones because I think one of my inks was actually running out when I printed them because they, they weren't quite black and white. Like the white was not white, white. But anyway, they ended, it ended up working fine and it doesn't really matter, does it? So I'm sticking down everything with my Scotch Tacky Glue. And as I said, I'm leaving the edges of a lot of the pieces loose so that I could turn them up and bend them up away from the page just to give that extra dimension to the page. Now, in addition to the frames from the ephemera pack, uh, when it came to embellishing this page, I thought I would try and bust some stickers that were left on one of the accessory sticker sheets from the collection. Now, if you're anything like me, Getting to the end of a sticker sheet is like a momentous occasion. Um, very rarely do I ever finish a sticker sheet. Uh, usually that's because there's a few on there that I find just don't work for projects or I might not like them. They might not be my style. So I do love all the stickers on this sheet. So I thought I would try and get rid of a few more of them on this layout um, I didn't quite get to the end of it, but I think that I will be able to finish off what's left in my traveller's notebook. Now, you can see that I also um, have added a bit of frayed gauze to my layers there just in behind my photo because you know I love the, the soft texture that it brings. And my goal with this page was I really wanted to have a mixed font title. So I used the word days from the ephemera pack and I used the word happy from the die cut titles pack. So I still ended up with happy days, which was the title that was intended from the ephemera pack. However, I did mix it with one of the, uh, the die cut titles instead. So I could use those two different fonts. Um, I really, one of the reasons I chose to 
do the mixed font title and use that sort of charcoal scripted word happy was to try and pull in some of the blacks that were in the photo, the black and white photo. So what I did with those words is I popped both of them up on some foam tape just to give it a bit of dimension and I really just wanted to bring those words up to the same height as the photos because I'd already put some scrap cardboard in behind the photos. Now with my embellishments you can see there that I've got some flare buttons left so I was determined to use a flare button. Now when I use flare buttons I don't tend to just stick them on the page on their own because I find that being round and being quite dimensional, they sit up quite high off the page, that if you don't layer them with something else, I find your eye can be immediately drawn to them. And I think that they require something else underneath them just to help them blend with the layers on the page. So you can see I've got that really sweet little um, Hessian heart there from Charms Creations. And I'm going to use that to layer my flare button with. Um, I often use Charms Handmade Embellishments for layering flare buttons, particularly hearts and stars. Um, they are my favourites. And I chose this one with the Hessian because it was just nice and neutral and I knew that it would fit in really well with this colour scheme. So you can see that up above the heart and the doily there I actually had a floral sticker from the sticker sheet which I have tucked in there I've also tucked in another floral sticker down in the bottom right corner um, near my photo there and you can see where I'm creating those three clusters so I'm creating a cluster at the top I'm creating a cluster at the bottom right and then I am creating a small cluster where my title words are on that left hand edge there. So as I've said to you previously, if you draw a line between those three points on your layout, they will create a triangle. And your aim is to have the focal point of your page, which should be your photos, fall within that triangle. That will help the viewer's eye be drawn to your photos. It will help bring balance to your page. And if you're someone that struggles with, you know, knowing where to put things on a page, I find if you stick with that rule and if you also keep your embellishments pulled in tight, keep them pulled in tight, don't have anything floating out by itself that's not touching something else, just keep everything pulled in nice and close. Um, you can't really go wrong. So going back to that whole rule of threes, you can see that besides the Charms Heart, I also had two of the Fabric Puffy Hearts from the Daydream Collection, which I have placed in each. So I've got a heart in each of the clusters, again, to make sure it's balanced. And then I had a little piece of paper that had some flowers on it that I had previously been fussy cutting from. I had a little scrap left. So I cut a little bit from that. Um, I also had one of those little moth stickers. I had some phrase stickers. I had a little um, tab sticker, which I've put up above the photo. And now I am just going in to stamp some phrases on my page. Um, the phrase that I actually used was a typo stamp and it says, so sassy it hurts. Um, I also stamped the date on that little label sticker that I placed down in the bottom right corner. And then I wanted to finish it all off with some black splatters because again, I was trying to draw in the blacks that were on the page and just make the whole thing cohesive and come together. And that was basically it. Now I will place a link down below, links below to everyone else's project. So make sure you get around and check them all out. Thanks so much for watching today. Bye.